Good luck. Who we get sent to this game? Ah, uh, so one previous game we had some expedition um, where we'd considered bishop exchange stuff. Um, <laughs> how far down the rabbit hole do I want to go? So, yeah, we can consider the sort of fun stuff, right? I'll see how much of Hidechi's content I can recall from memory. Uh, it's not going to be perfect. Um, it might not even be close. But if I can play reasonable moves and somehow transpose into a bishop exchange opening, that would be a fun outcome. I'm trying to remember, I think it was bishop up here and then the gold can capture next. And so otherwise this would be temple lost bishop exchange, but this is just simply bishop exchange. And the fact that Temple Lost Bishop Exchange is playable um, should indicate that even if I somehow mess this up, it could still be interesting. Okay. It's so the reason I put my bishop up here was that I intended to support it with the silver and then recapture with the silver if this is maybe the right thing to do. This is where my memory is getting a little bit fuzzy. And details do matter, but... Um... Okay. So I want to play fourth foul rook, get my king to safety, etc. Um, unless there's some great tactic in this position, but not that I'm aware of. Um, I could play static rook, which I usually don't do. That could be interesting. Hmm, how do I attempt to deal with this? Since I've offered a bishop exchange and they've not taken the offer, and this immediate exchange forcing their silver to move doesn't seem profitable. Um, yeah, I think we just try to castle our king. I think that's the sane response here. The aggressive response would be try to open this second or eighth file. Um, yeah, second file, just push the pawn up three times if I have three tempi to do it. If I push, silver moves. If I push, they do something else. I push again. My king and rook are eventually going to get forked. I don't know. It's going to be a strange outcome if this sort of thing happens. So, yeah, we're going to attempt to do an exchange and castle my king over here. Which I think is actually reasonable. Um,. So my silver can cover everywhere that the bishop used to be able to cover. Usually I don't think there's ever time to get the silver moved up, because usually they force the issue first. But since my opponent's not forced the issue, um, my silver will be very well placed down here. 
That's all just have a very solid shape that cannot be broken easily. Actually, this this is something like Yagra with the gold, silver, and pawn pawn. Now that I think more about it. And if I get the other gold over here, that's actually Yagra. Um, but my king is going the other way. So we're in novel territory one way or another, I think. Okay, I just alt-tab to verify that my video capture looks nice, and it does. Um, Alright, if there's any position where I should be prompted to force the issue, it would be this one. Because otherwise, if the king moves again, um, then if I capture, the king could capture here. But I don't want to give up another tempo. I want a castle too. And I don't see how my opponent uses or profits from using extra tempi here. So yeah, we're gonna tuck the king away safely. And maybe once the king is tucked away in the corner, and the silver is brought up for half Mino. Hmm. <laughs> oh wait, I could have considered right hand fourth foul rook. Or right side fourth foul rook. I keep saying hand, but it's right side fourth foul rook. If I'd not put my rook here, I could have put considered putting my king where the rook's at, the gold up and the rook over on the fourth file and just break here. Um I've not done that before, and I don't know how well that jives with this bishop exchange concept, but um, it's interesting. But yeah, we're going to play Mino or Anaguma or something. Anaguma's kind of discouraged because my gold's all the way over here, but half Mino is fine. So yeah, I've built up a very strong shape here. I guess ordinarily the weakness to a bishop drop would be right here, diagonal from my gold. Thankfully, my rook does cover that square. So I suspect what they're considering is, do they continue building their castle? Do they block this diagonal? Like, how do they spend their time now? While I know my next few moves are, I just want to put my king safely into the corner and see whatever it is that they do. I don't think if I press the issue that, like if I force a bishop exchange, losing yet another tempo, that's just not worth it here. Because I've already built up a really nice solid shape, and they can't drop a bishop anywhere on my half of the board. So, yeah, we're just going to accept that I have a slow... Actually, I could build um, Elmo Castle. Does Elmo make any sense here? That is, bringing the silver up and the gold over makes a hole right. No, it doesn't, because the silver covers it. <sighs> is this worth considering? Or do I really want my rook to be um, this... Uh, fourth file. Hmm. Uh... Or honestly, the rook might even belong elsewhere. It might be fine where it's at, and I just need to push this pawn once I've castled. Um, so, the reason I was inspired to like moving my silver toward the center is because I'm concerned about the weakness of the center pawn and how I'm going to deal with that weakness. So one idea would be bringing the bishop forward, and then some of this gets uh, under pressure immediately. All right. So interesting.
Interesting. Good gravy. So if I push my third foul pawn, I'm sorry, if I push the pawn that's on my bishop's head, the seventh foul for me, third foul for my opponent. Um, this would prevent the silver from moving out uh, to here. And if they attack my pawn, I push it again. They take the pawn, we exchange bishops and drop on 5-5. Five, five. And the opponent would have to drop their bishop on the same diagonal since I'd be attacking the rook. Um, and they are actually well equipped to deal with bishop drops at the moment. But yeah, what inspired me to want to move this pawn? Well, I don't want to see the silver advancing any further. But the silver rook and pawn in concert can't actually... Well, they could do something. They can move the silver and then push the pawn twice. Well, pushing the pawn is the risky thing that I want to see happen. So they don't want to push this because the bishop exchange and the bishop 5-5 five five drop is scary. Um, but it's even scarier if my pawn's up a rank. That's what I'm trying to get at. But if it's up a rank and then they push the silver forward, then if I push this again... Um, I'm giving up the pawn, which releases all the tension that I want to build by putting my bishop on 5-5 five five and then trying to push the pawn once more. So, in conclusion, um, I should just castle. None of these rapid attacking ideas I have are profitable. So castling is the same thing to do here. I get so excited um, for two reasons. One, because breaking on the third file is exciting and easier to achieve than a break on the fourth file. But also because I'm concerned that this silver is somehow going to ruin my day over here. Despite the fact that I've built up a very nice complement of forces to deal with whatever they could throw at me. So... So they ask the question, if I want to close the diagonal, ironically, the answer might be yes. Because, um, like, the silver blocks the pawn, the pawn blocks the knight. Um, none of this is going anywhere. If I close the diagonal, I could open it later. It's only temporary. Um... As opposed to, like, if I force a bishop exchange, it's just not the right time for that. Time's on my side here. I can open things whenever I want. So, yeah, how about that? I'm okay. Yeah, I spent some time building this shape. But how does he attack? He can build Boat Castle, which allows for a rapid attack on what? Where's the rapid attack in a land? I don't know. I was more concerned about uh, silver 8-6 and then pushing this 7th foul pawn. Um, this one didn't concern me as much because he's in the way of the pawn that he wants to attack with and he can't capture his own pawn here. The best I see he could do would be to back up the silver and approach again, but... Um, that comes with loss of time. Right, and if he pushes here, I could just take it. Um, and I'm not afraid of a rook exchange. Maybe I should be. But I think it hurts him far more than it hurts me. So uh, I guess what he's planning is uh, bring the rook over, push the pawn, and see some fireworks. Uh, like bringing his silver up, and I exchange bishops, and he hopes that the tactics work out, and I hope the tactics work out in my favor. So, um, the other thing is maybe he's trying to discourage me from pushing this pawn at all, and he just likes this shape being locked up with the silver never moving, and my piece is never moving either, but my rook is not stuck here. Uh, but if I move my rook, 
um, then I lose control of this square on the back rank. So I have to be careful if I move the rook and try to open a file. All right, he's building some castle. I think he just really wanted me to close this diagonal. All right, so we're going to provide an escape route for our king. And then I think push our center pawn. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure where my rook belongs at this point. Uh, but yeah, I do need to break the board open on some file eventually. I could even sack this pawn just to force the bishop exchange. This position could be, like, immediately I'm threatening a bishop drop, hitting the knight, hitting this pawn, although the knight's defended. Um... But then I could push this pawn, forcing this silver to give away this square. <laughs> so, like, giving away a pawn to open lines is not the worst idea here. Oh, sorry, silver could take instead. That could be troublesome. No, but then I get the square directly. Without contest. Anyway, um... Yeah, he's... His point is that I've over-concentrated my forces dealing with this pawn, and that I have to spend some time shuffling my pieces to better deal with this pressure. And he's probably right. I just don't think it's a huge problem. Um, which file do I want to try to... Okay, so if I open this diagonal... I'd need to relocate my bishop back here for that to make any sense. Um, huh. Interesting. I need to move. So the safest thing for me to do, no, it's not the most profitable. Um, this position's so strange. We've both done a number of weird, th oh, okay, this is my target. We're going to try something exciting here which I might not recommend that everybody replicate. Um, so multiple ideas are circulating through my head. One of them is that I completely split my castle and play like this, is it called like sleeve rook? When I line up my rook right next to my king with their king. Um, so my gold, or silver will be up here, my Rook will be occupying where the silver is, and silver and gold don't defend each other at all. And I'm prone to every kind of exchange ever, because there's forks everywhere. Um, but the positive aspect of this is that I can break the third file, and if my rook is here, then it can take here, and it can take the gold, and like I can cause mayhem with my rook. And their bishop can't do anything. They'd have to force some exchanges to be able to make progress, and I don't see how they profit from exchanges, which um, would help me have a more fluid shape with these generals. So that's one crazy idea. Another is bring the silver up, cold over, and playing uh, Subway Rook. Um, but both of these ideas feature this move, so we're just going to play it. All right, they played quicker than I imagined. Um, so I get to pick. I think I'm feeling the subway rook idea better than I'm feeling the other idea. Um, yeah, let's do it. What? I mean, the fact that I attack very slowly 
has really no bearing on any of this um, since they're not attacking. This is a defensive shape here. This is a defensive shape here, as best as I can tell. This is a defensive shape. They've been defending against bishop exchange ideas and have not shifted into whatever nonsense we're in. And I'm very slowly figuring out how I can move my rook and move my bishop and then bring the silver up and then do whatever else it is that I want to start attacking with. So we've got time. Um... So the other idea is that I push this pawn up and knight up. And the silver, I guess, could go to 5-5, five, five, or it could attempt to make some sort of attacking threat. I don't see the threat, so... Um, yeah, let's bring the knight up. The knight threatens to fork the silver and the bishop which puts pressure on them. The knight covers squares that complements my pawn. And this follows the proverb of pushing the odd file pawns. So moving the knight does weaken this square, but the bishop's not attacking this anyway. Silver's not attacking this. Um, so yeah, I'm just waiting for them to attack and slowly creeping forward. And I just don't see how they attack here. We've had, it's ironic, we've had some exciting games where my opponent got blown out in the opening. So I implored them, please, castle. And they did this game. They built a good castle. Um, but at some point, yeah, it is necessary to attack as well. So if they play silver 5-5, five, five, I can push this pawn. And stuff gets crazy, but the silver's hanging unsupported by the bishop and threatening to break on this file um so yeah this is definitely putting the question to the silver like what are you doing this silver has other questions this knight has other questions this gold is playing defense it's clear what this gold is doing it's playing defense here this rook is supporting the pawn's dream of fighting someday um it's just hard to make a good shape here. So. Yeah, I know I've been suggesting that I was going to do the subway rook thing, but now they're actually attacking. They have two silvers ready to fight. Um, so that's concerning. So not feeling the whole subway rook thing at the moment although it probably is fine but if this silver moves to five five we just break open the line and say uh, this is pinned they defend it um what do i do after the oh then i take the pawn and i'm just up a pawn so we will have done all of this just to win a pawn but where does the silver go next like that's what confused me. Since I've heavily defied, uh, defended this corner of the board, and I'm defending the area in front of my king. Okay. This protects against me hitting their silver directly. Um... Hmm... So I have a choice. Do I attack on the edge file while they're not ready for me to attack? Um, so if I push the pawn, pawn takes, lance takes, they move this bishop, I exchange lance as I drop another lance back here somewhere and then put my rook behind it. That feels like the right thing to do here. Or do I drop the rook back and assume they'll move the bishop and I play something more defensive. Um, hmm. No, this bishop is threatening to take the pawn that's not defended. I need to strike. I have no choice but to strike here to force this bishop to move, although it's going to go forward. Um, 
but I have to attack. So, uh, yeah, we're going to attack here. On account of this pawn being weakened, I had grand plans of gradually dropping back the rook, gradually moving the bishop somewhere to defend this, bring the silver up gracefully, and just wait for stuff to happen. But um, our opponent is playing some aggressive moves now, so we have to respond in kind. Okay. Um, oh, they've def defended against this pin idea. I see. That's clever. Although if I push here, I'm still attacking their silver. They have to like take here or something. Um, but more to the point, let's just go after the king. I don't think they're going to do bishop takes pawn, which would be kind of crazy. Uh, so I'm a pawn to the good, I'm attacking in the direction of their king, and I can defend this with my rook if I need to. Which I might. Um, it would... I'm being cowardly, I want to defend this. Because then I've temporarily defended everything. Um... Another thing that's kind of interesting is promoting the pawn with the idea of silver takes, silver takes, bishop takes, and oh, I guess their knight is threatening to do stuff afterward. So promoted pawns, not decisive here. Um, yeah, let's defend my weakness and then consider that this silver in the center is not supported and can be kicked. So he's got one tempo to come up with something clever here before I kick his silver, and then I guess maybe kick it again. Um, now kicking it twice would allow the bishop to promote and then take my rook, but I get a silver. Um, now kicking it also might not be the best, because I would like to use my bishop to attack. So pushing on this file to threaten to take the silver might be even stronger than just kicking. But, um, yeah, I, I think we both experimented this game. Um, we both had some interesting ideas, uh, but mine somehow landed faster. I think just this particular shape didn't work out this time. It's hard to break Yagra, or a Yagra-like shape. Normally you'd have the silver here, you have a gold, gold, whatever. Here, in this case, I got a bishop stopping this pawn from moving, and this is just hard to break up over here. Although I'm considering pushing this, threatening to take the silver, threatening to take here afterward. Uh, if I push and I take here, silver takes, they actually get a pawn in hand. So this would be a reason to consider just kicking directly. Plus if I push this and they defend it and I kick and I kick again, they could go back. And it's a question of, is my bishop's influence on this diagonal... Um, that's actually very strong. I can't regret that, can I? Maybe I can. Oh, the other thing I'm completely missing is that, well, it doesn't really make sense, but if somehow my silver could come out and start attacking their king, this would be a different story. But if my silver moves, like, stuff collapses, they either take here or they take there. They bring their rook toward their king to actively defend this file. Hmm. That's exciting. 
for reasons. If I push here, this is very strong because I'm threatening Tokin takes pawn and then Lance takes Lance. Um, I'm sorry, not very strong. This is strong. It's not very strong. See, I don't want the silver here anymore. This pawn back here has been a weakness. <sighs> um... Yeah, so I'm prompting them, please sacrifice your silver for a pawn. Or please just go back. Okay, they have opted to sacrifice their silver for a pawn. Um, and presumably some other compensation. So now I have multiple silvers to attack with. Oh, I'm sorry. Good game. I guess this might have been part of the plan, too. If this were legal, I wonder uh, what the implications of it would be. Um, let's see. What is their comment here? I'd be glad to do post-game analysis. Ah! Yeah, it's... <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to turn off emotes only mode. Yeah. Um. Uh, would you prefer to start analysis? Uh, so. Oh, don't know if we know, if I know what Kimura Mino is, but I built it. It's the evolution of a half Mino. Spiffy. I might have seen the shape before, but didn't know it had a name. But we're talking like gold protecting silver in this way. Um, okay. Yeah, I guess we start from the beginning, eh? Uh, unless you have a preference. <laughs> ah, sure. Yeah, I will gladly take whatever viewers can recommend to, because I don't know everything about everything here. Um, I'm trying to recall Hidechi's uh, comments from a video I watched uh, months ago. Um, but I think the main line is Bishop takes Bishop. I don't know. Oops, that's not how bishop takes bishop. Um, so I'm not playing this every day. Uh, oh, good. Yeah, so if you prefer, we could put the big board on for everyone. And you could just chat in the Twitch chat room. And this way, whoever views the video later can actually see everything, too. Um, if that is convenient, we could do it that way. Um, so, yeah, I wonder, like, uh, if I remember right, either before or after I move the silver, bishop takes bishop is kind of normal? I don't know. Um, I've not played this shape very frequently. Um, and the other thing, like, if a bishop exchange were to occur and I got the silver up here, I'd be... Tempe faster on building Yagra, which again, like I've not built like putting the pawn up, gold up over here, king into the corner. I usually don't play that. Um, I'm not sure if I would have done that this time or not. If like I got the silver up onto this um, seven seven square, I'm not sure if I would have gone for Yagra in a left hand castle, completely breaking tradition with every other game I've played in the last couple months. Um, other than the duck game. Um, seems like the silver... Yeah, you're absolutely right that the way the game proceeded, my silver was I very concentrated in this corner. Um, so you're absolutely right about this. So it's not as if you're forced to do that. Um, no, I just thought 
Uh, this is an interesting shape. I liked what you did here um, until this point. Here, this surprised me um, because you're not going to move the silver forward here. You're not going to take your own pawn. So if I just deal with the other place your silver can go... Okay, yes, I'm over-concentrated. Um, but this rook and silver aren't moving anywhere. So I guess if we count it out, we've got a rook for a rook, silver for a silver doing nothing. You do have pressure on this diagonal. So if you could find some way to force things open, that could change this dynamic. But... If you can't find a way to break open the position, uh, eventually I'm going to move the rook, eventually I'm going to move the bishop back and the silver up. Uh, I just never found time in the game to do it. Let's see. Oh, bishop 7-7 seven, seven there is not normal. Um, but if he takes, I could play uh, Sakura opposing rook. Was something that... I could swear that Muranaka did a video recently about Sakura opposing rook. I forget which side of the position he even played. Normally, in Bishop Exchange declined, you put pressure on the opponent using the Rook Pawn, um, forcing me to exchange bishops. Um, yeah, okay, this is not bad then. Sakura Opposing Rook. Interesting. Let me scroll up and click this, even though not sure that I, for video reasons, can include that in the video for copyright, whatever, because Wikipedia is not Creative Commons, and I release all my videos under Creative Commons license. But yeah, this is first to a double static rook, where Gota uh, switches energetically into a opposing rook position. Um, dating back to the Edo period, and um, it was after a famous match by Shogi Master Sankichi Sakata against Ichitaro Doi in May of 1919. It became popular and named after him. So that's common knowledge. The rest, you have to go to Wikipedia. Um, but okay, so I was completely not knowing what I was talking about. And so like part of the teaching ladder is that um, thankfully we have viewers who can <laughs> like transport here, who can set the record straight. Otherwise I'd just be like throwing this into an engine and then saying, okay, well that doesn't make sense. And then trying to find things on Wikipedia and they're like, oh, I don't understand this either. And then I would bring it to Shogi Harbor and Shogi Harbor would helpfully explain, oh, this is what's going on here. I'm like, oh, Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you. Oh, Shogi Harbor is so generous. Um, she really is. So, but also, like, I release the videos, and um, yeah, this somehow helps build a community despite my lack of expertise. But this particular shape, okay, yes, I'm over concentrated, but I thought eventually I'd find time to shuffle my pieces, and I thought like. I don't know what I was thinking, um, but somehow I was just glad to not, for once, get smashed on the left half of the board, like usually happens to me um, when I'm playing third file, fourth file, any file I tend to usually get my bishop in trouble and then the eighth file here breaks and I usually have some counter attack and it's not entirely sound. Um, so I was relieved to see that I had a solid shape here, but I am very heavily concentrated, and it'll be difficult for me to attack later. Uh, your plan was to swing the rook over to 6-2, which you ultimately did. Um, you thought you needed to have another threat, yeah, for this switch to become effective. Uh, yeah. And it made sense for the bishop to be used as part of the threat. It's just it was difficult for you to build up a strong castle while the bishop was also moving. Um, so 
I guess there's several ways... Actually, so... Because I have this threat of opening the diagonal... Um, at some point you have to either decide, like, are you going to close this and then defend this pawn up here with a general? Or you have some other way of closing the diagonal. Maybe have a vanguard pawn. I'm not... Actually, that's an interesting idea. That's interesting, because a vanguard pawn would definitely prevent me from easily breaking open the diagonal. Whereas if you play the fourth file pawn, I could break on the fourth file. It's difficult for you to uh, protect the square in front of the fourth file pawn, but the vanguard pawn is actually a little easier to hold here. But anyway, I was going to suggest, because um, I don't know what I'm talking about, that there's also Elmo Castle. Um, which may or may not be appropriate here. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure how to attack from this shape, because I don't play this shape ever with my king there. Um, yeah, the fifth file, pawn 5-5, five five is interesting, because I'm not sure how to counter that. <laughs> That's the first time you've played this shape, too. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll figure this out somehow. Um, so I thought this is a reasonable play. I think this is what Transport's talking about, of me building... Uh, what did he call this? Um, what did he call this? Kimuramino, I believe. Um... So, the only reason I suspected that this is a playable shape is because I think I see, saw Mornaka play something similar once. Although he had, like, the Subway Rook hat on or something. I could be confusing this with some other player, but the idea was, like, silver up, gold up, pawn up, knight up, and the Rook drops back and over. Um, I could be completely confusing this with some other shape, but... Uh, I thought this was playable. Now, it's a very slow attack, but I don't see you attacking any faster here. Um, this just, to me, did not scream that you were attacking somehow, because this blocks the pawn, which means the knight can't move, and if you move the other knight, that's the one that's defending the edge file that I'm threatening to break on. So... I didn't know what your threat was here. I think the fact that I got this pawn move in um, allowed me to build a higher castle. And I just didn't see how you could break it. Um, I mean, you do have to play this, I think. Uh, but I had time to play this, so I guess I'm criticizing this move? Am I really criticizing this? Because that's a really natural-looking move. Um, how can I possibly criticize this? Maybe it's still playable. Uh, yeah, and then I would have played this silver up. And Okay, I might have delayed this silver move a bit. So, the observation I'm making here and now is that uh, this part of the board is important to defend. And this is important to defend. So, recognizing that I'm not able to force a bishop exchange right now, I would have been tempted to play this. Um, now I'm still going to play like this here, but... Um, yeah, and then at this point I could decide, like, okay, do we really want to bring the silver forward, or what else is going on in this position? Um... But yeah, this twin gold shape seems to defend a ton of squares right next to your king. And since I think this is going to be played eventually, I, I don't think you're afraid of me dropping a bishop way back here. I could be wrong. Um, yeah, you were afraid of 1-5. Oh, okay. So, yeah, this is... The fear of 1-5 is what drove you to play this, perhaps? Uh, and this too? Uh, and this... Well, okay, I'm sorry, that doesn't make sense at this point. But, 
um, before Knight 3 3, I would buy this Story of Fear of 1 5, but this is actually kind of provoking me to play Pawn 1 5. Um, okay, Transport was expecting Pawn 1 5 on some move number. Uh, I don't know. I think he means here. Uh, 29. Um, oh, the knight was in response to my knight. Okay. Yeah, my knight is kind of menacing. Um, I don't know. I have to think about that. That's confusing me a little bit. Um, yeah, my knight is spooky. Um, the thing that it was threatening was a fork of the silver and the bishop. Um, okay, that is very tactical. So yeah, that does defend against, um, my knight doing the fork. Which, maybe I could force the fork after I push this pawn, and, like, the silver has to choose between this and that. Um, and if you go up, then it's just trapped, or otherwise endangered. So, you're reacting to this fork idea by bringing the knight out to defend against the fork. Um, yeah... Let's see. Uh, as long as the bishop is blocking uh, the lance, or the edge. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I wonder, I maybe I should go back here a bit. How long is... Okay, so the bishop's attacking the pawn. I defend the pawn. I defend my general. And at this point, like, this is my personal preference to defend the general, play this defensive thing, even though usually I like attacking um in this position i don't want to attack with my generals disconnected but at this point this is a very serious threat um so transport suggesting maybe i should just do it, it looks strong um yeah there's no reason for me to delay this is there um wow okay I had idly toyed with this idea in my mind during the game. And my rationale was like, hey, look, my generals are all scattered. And look at all my pieces that are defensively postured here. How could this possibly be the right time to launch an attack? Um, but no, this is actually a really strong move. So, huh. That's funny. Um, oh, okay, so yeah, what I was observing earlier about, I didn't like this. This is useful against bishop drops, but right now it's not useful to defend that. Um, this is reasonably well placed, although it's not aggressively placed yet, because we spent time pushing this pawn. Spent time pushing this pawn. We spent time, um... Moving this general up, like, we do need to keep a general near our king. It's fine to spend time on that. Um, we spent time putting our bishop on the edge. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think you need to deal with this pawn 1-5 threat here. Uh, and the only way I see to do that is this, but this makes the bishop a target on a different file. So, this might not be too great either. Um, so, I guess my emotional reaction to this during the game, like, I keep menacing that someday I'd love to open this diagonal, and that if you ever push the fourth file pawn, I'll find a way to get my rook over and support an attack on it and open this diagonal by force. Even opening the diagonal might not be that useful for me. Um, but I keep pretending that I have a threat there. I'm ignoring the fact that this pawn is undefended. 
So if somehow you break through, I'm in trouble. But I could spend a tempo, like moving this gold up, or moving the rook over, or somehow otherwise, or rook up, somehow I'll defend this. Um... So, yeah, what what's Gota supposed to do? I mean, I indicated this would be my preference. Just being unsure where to attack. Understanding, like, I'd like to attack here. Understanding maybe this might be an idea, but maybe not. Um... I wasn't totally sure, like, where the attack is going to land, because I seem to have combined a couple interesting things. Um, so one is I like to do this bishop exchange idea. Uh, I've, In my perspective, I temporarily blocked my bishop, and eventually I'm going to unblock it if I get the chance. Which is why you brought this rook over eventually, is to discourage me from unblocking it. But even there, I was considering sacking the pawn just to get the bishop exchanged. Um, so, yeah, in my mind, you kind of need to block this diagonal somewhere. Um, but I don't know where your attack is. That's the other thing. It's like, you built something similar to Boat Castle. Um, this silver can't attack because the other pieces are in the way. This silver can't attack because my pawns restrict it. This pawn can't attack because all my pieces are stopping the pawn. So it's just a very clogged position for both of us at the moment. But at least I have some ideas of how to unclog my side. I just don't see what Gota does here. Seventh file pawn push looks good for Gota. Yeah. Okay, so this is still the weakness, so just move the pawn through the silver and hit the bishop. Um, yeah, this is really the problem. So I'm trying to think, like, how far back do we have to back up to, like, find a reasonable plan for Gota here? It's not trivial. Uh, but this just greatly surprised me. Uh, I recognize that it is a shape, and it gets played sometimes. I just could not figure out the meaning of the shape um, without the rook supporting it. If the rook does support it, I just break on this file. So this is what I was hoping to better understand. It's like, if you do this shape, um, I wanted to know, like, what this meant. It does mean something. Every shape has a good and a bad meaning. Or every move has an advantage and a disadvantage. So, I'm just, I'm struggling to understand the shape. I'm sure it makes sense, I just don't get it. That's a fault on my part. Um, so I was actually really curious. And, like, I get that this is a useful idea. Um, someday I'll figure this out. Just right now I'm confused. Um, maybe the idea here... Huh. I'm trying to think through, because it's going to be difficult for me to attack at the moment, right? All my pieces here are very tightly bottled up. You've got some time to build a really strong castle. Um, you don't have to build a quick castle like this. You can build whatever castle you want at whatever time I've given you. Maybe that's the meaning of this shape versus this shape, because, like, I am over-concentrated, so you can slowly, like, if you want to, um, build this and the king up and over, and I'm not sure what else you do here, uh, that's possible. Um, 
Maybe that's what this is about. Yeah, but silver 8-3. So 8-3 to 7-4 to 6-3 to 5-4. It's a long journey for the silver. That's not wrong. Now, it's still going to be a long... Well, it's going to take me more than one move to get my rook moved so that I can move the bishop, so that I can move the silver. So we're talking about at least three moves on my end. I'm going to have to burn reshaping all of this. So I'm basically giving you three free moves to build whatever you want. Because um, it's going to take me a long time to get untangled out of this mess. Um, so yeah, that uh, in that sense I was pushing the envelope here just seeing like what could we come up with. Um, so yeah, one idea like... Um, Transport mentions is that's one two moves. Um, you could spend two moves doing this, sure. Uh, although we're not sure if the silver belongs here or belongs there, right? Um, so, yeah, my thought is since we're not sure where this belongs, we're not totally sure where this goes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to circle the lance. I clicked it out of habit, just thinking maybe we have some other plans for it. But no, in general, we don't re plan what to do with the lance this early. Um, yeah, if we want the knight to attack, and eventually we will want the knight to attack, although the knight can't use the square that the pawn's on, right? So because we've already pushed the pawn... Um, we can't bring the knight to where the pawn's at. So, as much of a problem as this pawn is in some bishop exchange openings, here we haven't even exchanged the bishops, and this is still a problem for the knight. Um, let's see. Yeah, if you uh, start swinging the rook, uh, I can push 6-5, right. Yeah, I was intending, like, I want to exchange rooks and see if I can cause anything complicated to happen. That was my idea. And I think this move by your, this pawn move you did, uh, does heavily discourage me from playing pawn 6-5. Um, so much so that, like, when I see this, I'm thinking, okay, I want to build some very strong castle. I want to leave this shape how it is for quite a while and see what my opponent comes up with while I build my castle. And ultimately I came up with the idea of trying to do Subway Rook here, which was unnecessary, And but like it was a way that I could keep this shape the way it is and not have to move any of these pieces. And then we had some confrontation happen. Um, but... Um, yeah, I think this whole shape just declares we're going to have a long positional maneuvering battle, which is not how the rest of this went. Um, so we observed here I played a shape that I think I've seen before. So, like, this was something I'd set out to do, and here the silver came up, so you've broken your castle. I think eventually you'll have to play this. Um, it's just a matter of can you find time to play it. Um, yeah, but I missed this pawn 1-5 idea earlier. It's much stronger than I gave it credit for. Right here, I should be doing this immediately. Um, and forget my knight. Like, this is just very strong with the bishop on the edge file. Um, so... Something got mistimed here. Um, but otherwise, I was just going to build like my silver up, hold up, pawn up, knight out. And then consider uh, that's seven moves. And I'm still really tied up in this corner. 
Like, I still haven't moved the bishop back. I still haven't brought the silver forward. Um, but I'm burning a lot of moves building this other castle that I don't see anything attacking at the moment. And I don't see how you attack, uh, given this shape. So I'd be more inclined to see... We're going to test my ability to build castles from memory. This is not going to go well. Um, how do we do this? So... I'm not even threatening this file here directly. Um, yeah, so we have to play the pawn opposition, but... Something like this, I guess? And then this up. And then this over. And then we build this in here. And somehow we get this gold over... Not there. Somehow we get the gold over here and we call it Yagura. And drop the bishop back and it's blocked by these pawns. Um, so that's not right. I've never built Yagara, so I don't know what I'm talking about, but um, it's an idea. So, yeah, I've been dancing around the issue that I really don't know what to do, so now I throw out a suggestion, and we get some actual suggestions here, which is great. Uh, sorry. Um, so, let's see. I mean, yes, I, I've, that is a valid way to build Yagura. Um, it's just in hindsight, after I got the bishop here, I'm like, well, crap, this pawn's blocking the bishop. So what's the point? Um, so maybe Yagura's not the right shape here. Uh, what other castle do I want to pretend that I understand how to build? I don't have a castle on the left side. I don't know any of these castles. How am I supposed to help? <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. Do enjoy dinner. It's been an interesting game and an interesting analysis. And hopefully at some point we'll have to bring this to Shogi Harbor Discord or her Discord, the Shogi Harbor's Discord. Um, ask around and like, what are we supposed to do in this position? Because I don't know. I just know I had some fun attacking chances after this bishop moved here. And didn't move again. Um, and I'm not sure if that's indicating, like, that the bishop should have activated itself some other way, or something else should have happened. I never castle on the left side. So, I don't play static rook openings. It's going to be interesting seeing input from other folks uh, who know more. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, yeah, we'll put the question both to the Discord and eventually to the show. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Jogi Harbor herself says about this, too. Uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us for this uh, game, and thanks for the post-game analysis, although we're both very confused. Um, and yeah, Transport has a good point about me pushing the edge file pawn earlier, and eventually I do push it. Oh, yeah, the other point. I know you're enjoying dinner, but for other viewers, um, yeah, this, tempting as it is, I probably would have played this pawn move instead and delayed things a little bit although like it's really scary oh, i'm sorry we can't do that i don't know how i would play this on one five is devastating but if it weren't i'd be considering stuff like this and being able to move the silver back if something went wrong um this uh was just tactically didn't work out uh because actually here maybe it does work out if you do something crazy i don't know this is iffy but it's exciting 
Um, yeah, maybe that's not so bad. Maybe my pawn takes pawn was not smart. Maybe I should just defend this. And then figure out what to do next. Oh. Yeah, I never read out... We were both in time pressure. I never read out uh, takes... Takes bishop moves somewhere. That's not an exchange. Uh, this could be an exchange. Huh. Okay, now we've read it out. Okay, never mind. Um, but also, like, pawn drop on 1 3, threatening. Well, then the king comes over. That's not so. Well, the bishop. Okay, let me read it out again. This bishop takes 1 1. Lance drop. And you want to defend against the pawn promoting. Uh, it's awkward. You ideally... I don't know if there's time to deal with this. You just put this on top of the bishop and everything's fine. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you pointed out this idea, which... I thought was a good idea, but it's even better. This pawn won five. I didn't realize just how good this was. But yeah, if you just put the like pawn or uh, lance right on top of the bishop, you're all set. Nothing to worry about. Um, yeah. Okay, so correct line somewhere. Something like this. Oh, earlier. Before I strike like that. So, some when, somewhere. You need to do something like this. Or right, pawn takes one four. I'm sorry. So we're talking about after I've initiated the conflict. Need to get the bishop out of harm's way. And then pawn drop one five would be ideal. Yeah. Uh, do, do, do. Pawn drop one five would be ideal, but you need that's the way this usually goes. It's just here, uh, they don't yet have a pawn in hand, but that would be the right way to normally deal with this. Okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, they need to press to get a pawn in hand earlier somehow. Um, Actually, they could kind of do that here. Hmm. Interesting. Since my silver is defending this pawn, I want to take here. Um, I kind of don't want to take here. I'd rather have my silver go up the board if possible, but... That's scary. Yeah, so... I just allowed that? Huh. Well, that's strange. Um... Yeah... I don't know why I just allowed this move. On uh, more than one occasion. This seems like an interesting move. Huh. Uh. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> um. So yeah, my pushing this is probably mistaken. Uh, because they've activated their bishop, and I'm trying not to endanger my king. So attacking for my castle is probably a bad idea. Um, so yeah, probably best is just rook over. Or rook up. Um, I'm not sure. Like, ideally I'd want to put the rook on the back rank, because it's really scary bringing the rook up or the rook over. 
I'd much rather have it on the back rank, but there might be tactical things that justify this particular move in this situation. Um, I'm thinking about, like, if somehow this pawn disappears, uh, bishop takes pawn is going to be a threat. And I don't know how best to meet that. But also, I don't feel like my rook on the back rank is super active. Um, a rook doesn't have to be active. Uh, yeah, this is fine. And then play this next. Yeah, I have time to do this. If I do do put the bishop out in front of my rook, they're going to play this. Which will be annoying. Um, so... That's one idea. There's a lot of ways this could go. But what I played in the game was not good. Because this... And now I'm stuck doing something like this. And we are in some interesting territory at this point. Um... My silver is the piece that should go exploring in general here, so there it goes. Now they've got a pawn in hand that can immediately strike here. Um, this is kind of, well, this would trap their bishop. But, um, yeah, they've got a pawn in hand. This is slowly opening up. Both of our kings are exposed. And eventually this rook is going to come over, and this will be interesting. Um, but yeah, my attacking from my castle does nothing to help me while all my pieces are concentrated like this. Um, because now I have to fight on this front, and I have to defend the sixth file. Uh, so... That's not trivial. Uh, on the other hand, having the pawns exchanged will eventually allow me to um, push this and drop the pawn here. So there is a positive aspect to this, but that positive aspect is immediately negated by them building Yagra. Yeah. Okay, I think we found the whole, um, yeah, so there's at least one constructive idea that they could do since I attacked from my castle, and uh, my pieces are not set up to attack just yet. I didn't realize when I pushed my third file pawn that uh, this immediately presents me with a dilemma because this silver is doing serving two responsibilities and if this pawn were to move then this pawn would be hanging so oh well there is another thing here like i could defend like this and this could happen but eventually this is going to be some way of transposing into a yagra shape uh with the king moving over and uh I am not equipped to deal with this. My bishop would like to be somewhere else. My silver would like to be somewhere else. So yeah, I've just asked for trouble here. I think. I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, the way it played out in the game did work out for me. Because this actually denies them the possibility of building Yagura. Because the knight's there. Uh, which forced a number of other strange moves. Um, but yeah, when I attacked the bishop, I think even though I was thinking um, bishop takes is not going to happen, because this gives up a bishop for one piece, um, it's actually kind of hard to defend this pawn. Note that if my rook goes over... Um, that's a fork. And they tell you never run from a fork. This might be the exception. But it's not. 
Because if you're running from this fork, um, then your king's in danger. So yeah, I can't play the rook over to defend this. I could put a bishop down somewhere to try to defend, and it, like, I don't know. This doesn't feel right. Um, not sure how bad that is. I mean, if I end up giving back my bishop for a silver, that's okay, but this is kind of hard. On the bright side, I do have one piece attacking, so we can still enjoy this pawn going up and then taking here, and then I could do lance takes lance and gradually build something. Um, it's not the greatest thing ever. The token could go up here, and then lance takes lakes, king takes, and a pawn drop. There could be something there, too. Um, well, this is interesting. So, yeah, I've actually defended the pawn, and I do have a pawn in hand, thank goodness. Otherwise, I would be toast. But, um, this could still be bad for me. No, all their generals are still too scattered, and their king too exposed for this to be successful. So... Yeah, okay, the sacrifice doesn't work. I'm not forced to take it, by the way. Um, I mean, taking it's profitable. But do I have anything better? Since the bishop... Uh, the bishop is actually threatening to take here. That is kind of a big threat. So maybe I am forced to react to this, even if I'm not forced to capture it. But yeah, capturing the bishop deals with the promotion threat. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's an obvious fork. And this is supported by the silver. So, okay. Yeah, this defense is no good. Uh, this defense is probably not much better. Just... It's asking for trouble. And things might work out. But it's just spooky. So. Yeah, that would have been an exciting way to continue. Maybe they were right here. So I did pawn takes 1-4 at the wrong moment. I needed to defend this first. But, uh, yeah. It'll be exciting when we put this into um, some engine to analyze the game and it points out all these other crazy things that we missed but um yeah the teaching ladder provides us opportunities to try new things i don't frequently play this especially you can know that i don't frequently play this because i played this next and i didn't know like whether that was appropriate or not uh i, I think i've done this maybe once before a very long time ago with that silver move um, I'm trying to remember if Shogi Harbor told me don't do that, or do that. I don't remember which. Uh, she didn't tell me it in that term, or in those terms, but, um, yeah. There might be a lot going on here. Anyhow, because I played this, um, this discouraged the opponent from doing anything further here. Although they did bring the silver out to say hi and to encourage me to block the diagonal, which I did. And eventually I'm going to unblock it, or find something else useful to do, and I eventually did find something else useful, but... Yeah, this bishop activation was interesting, and just didn't somehow end up timing well with everything else. So, yeah, they need to find some way to block the diagonal. Either by the Vanguard Pawn, or by building uh, Yagra. Um, and if the Diagonal's blocked, then... Well, I'm not sure that Yagra is the right idea. But, yeah, this activation of the Bishop... In combination with activating the Silver is an interesting idea. Because it's difficult for me to defend. Um... 
Thankfully, I did find... Well, why did I even do this? I don't know. I should have played this immediately. Threatening to play this style move. I think if you bring the king all the way over, it's no longer considered Fuji style. But, um... Yeah, this moment... This is probably where I need to play the pawn up. Threatening to do this... Uh, I think if I do it any earlier, it might be premature. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? And I wonder how early I can get away with this. I need to study Fuji's system a little bit. I understand it's complicated, but it'd be worth having a little practical knowledge to bring to uh, one of these teaching ladder games. So anyhow, yeah. Interesting analysis. Lots of unanswered questions. Um, so we'll definitely be bringing this to um, the weekly lecture uh, next time.